crying and groans fill this hospital ward. The signs of excruciating pain. This 18-year-old boy is going through hell. Wounded by a shell, doctors are trying to save his leg. At the moment, we have serious cases that we weren't used to seeing. It's rare to see amputees. At Ndosho Hospital in Goma, wounded civilians are pouring in. One operation follows another. OK, let's go to the operating room. More than 300 patients have been treated here since February 7th, the date of the latest N23 rebel offensive. That's five times the usual number. To cope with this influx of patients, the surgical team has been beefed up, going from two teams working in operating theatres to three. We have an average of 25 operations a day, without counting emergencies. Yesterday, for example, we were here from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. We have gunshot and shrapnel wounds. In the corridors, women and children wait to be operated upon. Others recover from their injuries. This is to realign the bone. In the room next door is Renia, who has also been displaced. A shell wounded her in the chest as she was preparing to flee a displacement camp on the outskirts of Goma, where she'd taken refuge. I feel awful. My husband and child were wounded by a bomb and died in Sake Hospital on my baby's birthday. I was almost dead when they brought me here, but they operated me. We fled because we were afraid of dying, but even when we took refuge, death found us. Despite the mourning and the pain, those who have escaped the fighting maintain hope for a better future. Yet they share a common feeling, that of being trapped in the cycle of conflict that has plagued Eastern Congo for the better part of 30 years.